So friends, it's been a while since I've got to share some Bible reading with you, and I always look forward to, to sharing God's Word. And we're so blessed to have our Heavenly Father. And I love sharing His Word as much as I possibly can. Today we're going to be reading from John Excuse me, Matthew, we're going to be reading about John, Matthew chapter 3. We're going to do the whole chapter. It's only like <clears throat> 17 verses long, so we're going to read the whole chapter. <clears throat> In those days, John the Baptist came preaching into the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah had talked about John. It says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, making his path straight. So John, a baptizer of men, come out of the wilderness to baptize for repentance. And it goes on in verse 4. Now John himself was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. So John was a, in our day and time, we would think he'd be kind of a rough looking character, wouldn't we? We'd think wrapped in camel hair and eating locusts and wild honey. Now if you remember about John, John was born of his mother was Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was a relative of Mary. Mary, Jesus' mother. And if you go <clears throat> to uh, in Luke, and I believe it's... Just let me look right quick, because I don't want to tell you wrong. <clears throat> Yeah, it's Luke. It's in the first chapter of Luke when Mary visited uh, Elizabeth, who was about six months along pregnant with John. And if you remember when Elizabeth heard Mary come into the house and speak that John, the baby, turned in her stomach, made a move in her stomach by hearing Mary's voice. And Elizabeth was uh, very old in age and, and uh, was blessed from God to have this child, John. And it's, you know, almost like John and Jesus knew one another in the wombs of their mothers. And that's, that's very interesting how... How wonderful our God is. Now, <clears throat> let's go to verse 7. Verse 5, excuse me. His food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, all the region around Jordan, went out to him and were baptized by him and the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming into his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The wrath to come is when Christ comes again. He says, because you know, in early in verse 1, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we don't know when our Lord's going to come back for us. We know that we have a patient God that has put us and give us the opportunity. He's very patient with us as sinners because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And His patience is overwhelming to me what he has for us 
the love that he has for us. So he said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. You remember Abraham? A very godly man. Abraham, you remember the story about Lazarus being in Abraham's bosom. Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus that passed away, he was a he was a beggar, and he just wanted food from the rich man's table. He just wanted the crumbs. He had sores all over, and the dogs come and licked his sores. When he passed away. He went into the bosom of Abraham in paradise. And the rich man, when he passed away, when he opened his eyes, he was in Hades, in torment. And that is some of what this is talking about. There's there's several lessons in this chapter 3, but this is, in some, and we'll get to that, in some of what he's talking about. He does talk about hell in this chapter chapter <clears throat> so therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not think to say to yourselves we have Abraham for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire Every tree that does not bear good fruit. See, this is an example to us. As a people, we are the tree and we are to bear good fruit. We are to be worthy to our Father in Heaven, to be Christ-like as much as we can and to live by God's Word, all His Word, not just some of it, but all of it. And see, the, these people were under the old law. And that's why he's talking about Abraham. But they were under the old law. This is before Christ was, was crucified on the cross. But John come out of the wilderness preparing the way for Christ. Preparing the baptism. The baptism that we have when we are baptized today in contact with the blood of Christ to come up out of the watery grave to walk a newness of life. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Now he's talking about Jesus. He said, I'm not even, he's so much greater than I that I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. He says, he will, Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You're thinking, well, how can he baptize? What's he talking about, the fire? What's he talking about? Well, you know that there's there's two sides of this fire. There's a cleansing fire. You know, just like a fire goes through the the brush and the woods and cleans everything up. And it looks like everything may be dead, just like we're dead in sin. But when the fire goes through, everything comes back and starts a newness of life. And most times, where the fire went through, the woods is better off that the fire did come through. It's got new growth. It supports wildlife. It's it's sometimes better than it was before. And then we got fire on the other side. We got the fire from Hades, the unquenchable fire that we're going to talk about too. Which side are you on? 
Are you strictly still a sinner, not being worthy to God, not have been baptized into Christ? Then if you don't change, then you won't be able to walk the newness of life like being baptized like you can being baptized into Christ. To love our God and be with Him for eternity if we do His will and keep His commandments here out of this Bible. So that's the other side of the fire. And, and, and you have a choice to be on which side of that fire you want to be on. His fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So what's he talking about? He's talking about gathering up the wheat, the good, the wheat, his children. And the chaff, the waste of, the, the waste of it, the chaff, it's going to be burned up by unquenchable fire. And friends, he's talking about Haiti. He's talking about hell. The place that none of us wants to be. And then we go to verse 13. This is where John baptizes Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John turned, uh, excuse me, and John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized of you. And are you coming to me? You're Christ. You are the Lamb sent by God. I can just imagine how John was feeling. You remember he said, I'm not even... <laughs> He said, I'm not even worthy to carry your sandals. And you come to me to be baptized? But Jesus answered him and said to him, Permit it, this is Jesus, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. For us, John. For me to fulfill all righteousness, I'm going to be baptized. God's plan from John in the beginning was to prepare the way for Christ to come because the people were living under the old law and baptism was not required under the old law. You remember they give sacrifices of animals, the blood of animals, and then the blood of Christ is coming and they and they know it's coming and John's trying to prepare the people for what you need to be doing he's preparing the way for Christ so John baptized Jesus in 16 it says when he had been baptized Jesus come up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting up on him. And suddenly a voice come from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Friends, it's... I love every one of you. And I want every one of you to be in heaven. And God wants us all to be there. It's, it's patience. He's coming. Christ is going to come someday and take us home. And I want to be there. I'm not perfect. By no means, I'm not perfect. I sin sometimes and fall short of the glory of God. But I have been baptized into Christ and I can go to him for that sin and realize that I've done wrong and ask for forgiveness and I will be forgiven because I have become a Christian 
through the baptism of Christ. Because of Christ, the sacrifice that he gave on the cross for each and every one of us. We know that baptism is for our sins. And we're dead in our sins until we become baptized into Christ and come and get up out of that water and devote our life to Christ forever. And if we live as faithful as we possibly can, study His Word, teach others when we can, and we can be found faithful. We can be in heaven. No more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. And friends, I want us all to be there. I want us all to be there. God wants us all to be there. So heed his words and do what he requires us to do. Study the whole Bible. It's all laid out, what we must do to be saved. It's not complicated. It's all right here in the scriptures. Friends, I have enjoyed this, sharing the word with y'all. This old hillbilly loves God. And I know how much God loves me and you. I thank you for your time. And hopefully, someday soon, I'll get to share God's word with you again. Thank you all very much for spending time with me, but most of all, with God's word. May God bless you.